there's one thing that you can start doing to improve your watercolor painting. The biggest mistake most struggling watercolor beginners make is thinking that their artistic journey revolves solely around mastering techniques. However, if you only focus on techniques and just blindly follow what someone else is doing without understanding why, you will most likely struggle to replicate that in your own artwork. You might have asked yourself in the past, why does it look good when I follow along with a tutorial, but not when I paint something on my own? Because here's the thing, techniques alone won't magically transform your paintings. Yes, they are a big and very important part if you want to have a solid foundation watercolor painting, but they're just one piece of the puzzle. Imagine trying to run a marathon wearing flip-flops. No matter how skilled a runner you are, those flimsy shoes will hold you back, making it impossible to reach your full potential. In the same way, solely relying on techniques without developing a crucial skill that sets other artists apart will limit your artistic growth. So what is this secret skill that so many people overlook? It's the art of observation. When you develop the skill to truly see, to observe the world around you with your own eyes and an open heart, your paintings will come alive. Think of it this way. You can have the most advanced camera in the world, but without the skill to see and appreciate the beauty in front of you, your photographs might just remain uninspiring snapshots. Similarly, in watercolor painting, technique is just the tool, but observation is the vision that brings your artwork to life. That's why whenever I teach inside my watercolor painting classes, I'm not just letting you follow me blindly along and without knowing what's happening. I always help my students to pay attention to all the nuances with the reference and explain exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing instead of just how I'm doing something. This way they too can start seeing all the nuances and connecting the techniques and ways of doing something with what they see accordingly. And once you develop the art of observation, you'll find that techniques become more than just mechanical steps. They become a means to express what you see and feel with authenticity and mastery. With observation as your foundation, you will be able to unlock the ability to capture the essence of your subject and automatically infuse your artwork with a sense of life and realism. So how do you do that? Let's talk about this now. It's all about truly seeing what is in front of you and painting that rather than relying on assumptions or what you think you see. Because our brains have a habit of filling in the blanks based on what we already know. But to create realistic watercolor paintings and also be able to do this on your own, we need to break free from the tendency. So the first step towards improving or enhancing your observation skills is to really study your subject up close and personal. So don't just rely on memory or imagination, really take the time to really look at what you're painting. And you might not see all the nuances just yet, but don't worry, know that your brain and your eyes are slowly but surely adjusting. It's like you develop brain skills that weren't there before, or eye skills. So let's say you're capturing the delicate beauty of a flower. Observe the intricate folds of petals, the way light dances upon them, and any interesting patterns or textures. Let's say you want to paint a landscape with a flowing river. Take a closer look at the water surface, the colors, any patterns you might notice, and really pay attention to the way the light dances on the water, creating the shimmering highlights and darker and more shadowy areas. And also pay attention to proportions and shapes because they are the backbones of realism in art. Sometimes our eyes can deceive us making objects appear larger or smaller than they really are. So to overcome this, take a moment to compare sizes and angles. You can even use your brush or a pencil as a measurement tool and really see what, what is the movement, what's happening there. And when painting landscapes with trees, 
observe how the size and shape of each tree vary based on their distance from the viewer. Start noticing how trees closer to the foreground appear larger and have more defined details, while those in the distance appear smaller and may have softer edges. So really pay attention to all the little details. And if you again paint water, notice the different sizes of the ripples and how the shape changes depending on how close or how far they are from the viewer. By accurately representing those proportions, your landscape will have this, you know, it will, convince, it will be more convincing and will create a convincing sense of depth and perspective. Paying attention to color and its intensity is another big and very important aspect. Because when it comes to capturing the realism of trees, for instance, resist the temptation to settle for just one single shade of green because you know trees are green or maybe orange. Pay close attention to how the colors shift as they they see it into the distance, creating an illusion of depth. Notice how the trees closer to you may have more defined and intense colors, while those in the distance appear lighter and bluer due to atmospheric perspective. Explore all the colors that exist in nature and really pay attention how color shifts during the day, during sun, during sunset, depending on, you know, different weather conditions. Or when you're painting clouds, really take a note of the subtle variations in color. Are the shadows of clouds really just gray or can you spot some maybe blues, purples in them? Just really start looking. Is the sky really just blue or do you see any variations in it? Would you rather use maybe ultramarine or a rather mix of phthalo blue or something else? And when painting sandy beach, go beyond the traditional notion of, you know, yellow sand. Observe the subtle hints of maybe pink, purple, some golden colors that emerge as the sunlight hits the grains of sand. And one of the ways how you can start developing your eye to truly see all the nuances in color is by developing a solid foundation in watercolor mixing. Because I believe this will allow you to see the differences between colors and really help you capture the world around you. If you want to learn more about color mixing, make sure to download my free guide to watercolor mixing and color theory, where I discuss this topic in more detail, because this literally changed my eyes. I, you can't unsee things after that. Remember, developing your observation skills is a journey, not a destination. And it does take time, practice and a sense of wonder and also just pausing and looking. So don't be discouraged if you don't see immediately results. Like if you think about what, what is she talking about? What does she see pink in here? Just trust the process. So embrace the joy of observing the world around you and capturing its beauty on paper. It's really your opportunity to slow down and really start to notice all the beauty all around you. Remember, you have what it takes to make your artwork shine. Until next time, happy painting. Take care.